I've got all the things going on right here with the 67 Beetle. I'm trying out all the power stations with all the solar panels and seeing what the best configuration is. Uh, up on the roof here, we have the EcoFlow 220 watt panel. It's so big, it doesn't even fit on my roof rack. But I thought I could have this in the car just as like a backup power panel to charge extra power stations. Underneath it here, I have these OPS 100 watt panels. So underneath I have um, 200 watts of solar with the OPS panels, and then I have this EcoFlow 220 watt panel that I can deploy. This is not attached to the car. I can just leave it disconnected from the car, move it around as I please, and um, when I uncover these panels, I can use these to charge the little power stations that are inside. Now the EcoFlow Delta is fully charged right now. We're at 100%. It's gonna be very hard to see in the sun, but we're at 100%. So I have no need to charge it with the solar panel, but the Blue Eddy is not charged. So we are looking at, let's see here. We got 103 watts coming in and it is at about, uh, let's see, 40% right now. So it's funny because the Blue Eddy has a 200 watt input maximum, and this is a 220 watt panel. But as long as it doesn't go, as long as it's not like fully in the sun, getting all the sun, it should be able to run this. So we're only bringing in like a th 100 watts right now. Yeah, we're bringing in about 100 watts and um, as long as I don't get this thing in full on direct sun, it should be able to charge the Blue Eddy. So I don't know. I'll have to try it with the OPS power station as well and see if the OPS power station will charge with this. I don't think the voltage is too high. The wattage is too high if it's in perfect conditions. So one of the reasons I am testing out the 220 watt panel on the Beetle is that I've been torture testing the OPS panels for over six months now. They've been up here on the roof of the Beetle, screwed down in the weather fully for over six months now. And they're starting to show a little bit of wear. The panels on the roof are delaminating a little bit. They're still working fine, but underneath this huge 220 watt panel, um, there is, you can see it's starting to get a little flaky. The surface of the panel is starting to like lift up a little bit, which will decrease its efficiency. That kind of filters out some of the sunlight, but they are still working great. So I am up here on the roof. Let me fold this away a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about with the OPS panels. So you see these places where there's like flakiness? That is just the panel delaminating a little bit. All right, so you see, I don't know if you could pick it up on camera, but if you see these panels have a little bit of this like white flaky looking stuff, that's the panel itself starting to break down. Uh, it's getting a little flaky. They are still working fine, but they are starting to degrade some. It's funny because this panel over here is showing a lot more wear than this one and they've both been out in the sun the same amount of time but this one's definitely getting a little bit more of that flaky delamination on the panel than the other one i am happy with the system the opes 200 watt panels and the power station that's 1200 watts it runs my set power fridge really well and it's been even keeping up I've been having this in freezer mode. It's been keeping up pretty well. When I get some cloudy ba days back to back, it starts to fall behind. But um, I've had this in freezer mode for the last couple weeks. I have it off right now because right now I'm out of frozen foods. But um, when I do have frozen foods, we keep all the frozen foods in the beetle. And in the bread truck, we have all the refrigerated goods. So it's really cool to have two zones now. We can keep all the free frozen meat and uh, whatever frozen vegetables and fruits in this fridge freezer running from the OPS power station and the solar panels. And uh, the bread truck is a totally separate system. So it's actually pretty cool to have a separate 
um, zone or a separate freezer that just runs on its own. This is the back of the Beetle right here. I actually have the Ops power station inside the bread truck right now. I just thought it would be a good idea to get out the the 220 watt EcoFlow panel with the EcoFlow power station, the Delta 2, and try it out and see how it works in the Beetle. So I may be switching to the EcoFlow system in the Beetle, you know, instead of the Ops power station and the Blue Eddy. These are great. This one works really well. Um, it does charge fast. We're getting in 51 watts right now, um, which is weird. Oh, I folded the panel up. So we're still getting 51 watts when it's halfway folded away. So when I unfold this, we'll see how much it goes up to. Let's see. Okay. So we should, yeah, we're, we're closer to 100 watts now. Yep, we're over 100 watts. So that's really good. I may leave the OPS panels on the roof mounted full time and then I'll leave the EcoFlow one inside the car and I'll just deploy it when I get to where I'm going. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is if I keep it in this configuration facing the sun, it'll be a shade for the windshield as well. It kind of closes off the windshield. I'll definitely need to come up with some sort of tie downs so that they don't blow away in the wind. Obviously I won't drive with that up there. but. Um, yeah, I was just testing things out to see if I could put my favorite power station, the EcoFlow Delta, into the bug as the power station. Rather than these slightly smaller ones, they're handy, they're useful, they do run my fridge, but it would be great if I could run everything off the EcoFlow Delta 2 with the bigger panel. One thing I really do hate is messing around with these panels. I don't want to set it up and tear it down every time I move. I will definitely be moving a lot in the Beetle, you know, changing locations, driving around. And I don't want to be carrying this big, heavy panel off the top of the car. It's really tough to move it around. I, it's, it's a little bigger than I want to move around. But if I leave it attached to the roof and I could just fold out this panel when I get parked, that could be great. You know, I could just like bring this up fold it into place, store it on the roof rack, and not really have to mess with it all that much, that could work out really well. So we'll have to see. I don't know how it's gonna go. So I found this is a pretty good configuration, having it angled toward the sun. As you can see, it is winter and the sun is very low in the sky. It is about, let's see, it's about 2.30 in the afternoon, and that's how low in the sky the sun is right now. If this was the summertime, it'd be much further overhead. But this is a pretty good configuration. The only problem is if I'm in windy conditions, this panel will just catch the wind and blow right off and probably break. So I wouldn't want to do that. But if I can keep this on the roof, I got two of the panels on the roof. This is a four-fold panel. So I got two panels on the roof rack. I got two angled toward the sun. And I am getting, let's see, I'm getting about 107, 120 watts right now, which is pretty good for this time of day with such a small panel and, you know, that's pretty decent. So I'm going to leave this on here for the rest of the day, see how much it charges the Blue Eddy. And uh, I don't know, I may experiment with this more in the future and just see how good of a solar system I can get on this Beetle without having to mess with it too much. Oh yeah, I also put the EcoFlow Delta 2 inside the car. It just is sitting on my bed platform back here. It's okay, I kind of like it the way it sits. It just, the only problem is that this bar, part of the roll cage, is a little too low for the power system to slide underneath. That is one thing that's nice about both the other small power systems I have is that they can go all the way up to that wall. But that's not that big of a deal. I can totally use this inside the rig as it is. It's running my little uh, LED lights that are in here that I use for lighting. And uh, yeah, a little rainbow color change LED lights. And yeah, that, that should work just fine. So if anybody knows, like, you know what kind of project's going on when you see one of these out, but we've been working on putting in a diesel heater. Hope you don't mind the little YouTubing. 
Oh, yes. Been working on putting a little bit of diesel heating into the into Justin's van. What's going on? It's exciting. All right, it's the moment of truth. We've been working on this diesel heater install for a couple days. We got diesel heater, diesel in the tank. We have power on the cute little control panel. It's hard to read, but this is the test, the first test, the first power up ever. All right, fan is on. Fan is on. Ooh, it's exciting. We have things just kind of like temporarily in here. That's why it's like kind of all over the place. But we wanted to test to make sure everything worked right before we did the final install. Diesel tank is there. A little further in is the diesel heater itself down there. We got to do a little bit more stuff, but we'll be checking. We'll be seeing if it works in just a moment. Glow plug is on. And that pump should start kicking pretty soon. I'm waiting to hear that. All right, we're fully running. You can hear it. Listen. Sounds like a jet engine going. We got air, hot air pumping. The combustion chamber is fully hot. It's been running for about 10 minutes now. Everything's looking good. So that'll be the end of this episode. Bye bye. <laughs> hey, babe. Yeah. How's the kite flying going? <laughs> it's going not good. What we're happened? Not, we're not flying. I'm waiting for you. I didn't want to have the maiden flight without you. Okay. So, we introduced a new baby to the family. Okay. This. Everyone, is Squeaker. Squeaker has 10 foot rainbow tails. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. I'm so silly. I don't think it's gonna work though. <laughs> What's wrong? Why is it not gonna work? There's no wind. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know which way it's going. Run. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure running. you just have to run. Oh, it's kind of working. <laughs> it only takes a five mile an hour wind, so if it like kicks up a little bit, at some point we're gonna be able to fly it today. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Super exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's just not enough. Okay. Ooh, it's so pretty though. We bought this here at the kite store. Cut to the clip of the kite flying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we bought it at the kite store here in Quartzsite, Arizona. In the queue. It's pretty, pretty um, extensive kite store. It's impressive and they're super knowledgeable and I recommend it. I don't know really where it is, but it's like, on the corner it's Ooh, you just look for the kites in the sky and you find it that is so pretty i could just do interpretive dance how did i do that okay <laughs> nice to meet you octa squeaky what's his name squeaker 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 the octopus <laughs> yes! So pretty! Fly, squeaker, fly! <laughs> Kite. Yeah, it was like 15 bucks at the yeah, $15? That's not bad. at the kite store. Definitely probably the cheapest one in there. It's funny, my, my internet don't want to look for it, but I'm sure you can find it. Yeah, when I get back to the truck, I'll look it up. So cool. We just came over here and our friend Ghislaine had just come back from Slab City and brought donuts. 
from the donuts during Calipatria. So we're having a good morning. Coffee, donuts, kite flying. <laughs> Every kid's dream. <laughs> It's so pretty. It's not huge, but it's definitely like showy. Huh. Definitely got a lot of movement. Yep. I love it. We chose the perfect one. <laughs> 